In today's episode of To Catch a Predator Data Analytics, I'll be analyzing John Kennelly. What makes John Kennelly a unique instance here is that he was the first predator to show up totally naked to the decoy's house. Could you explain yourself? I'm sorry. And moreover, within the span of 24 hours, he went back to the chat room, chatted up the same decoy, and tried to meet with him again, and got busted again by Chris Hansen. I have been in television for 24 years. I just came to get something to eat. And I have very seldom been at a loss for work. Sir, I just came but to get something to eat. But I don't even know what to ask you first. Now in this episode, I'll be analyzing the chat that went on between the two specifically trying to differentiate between the first day and second day of chatting. The chat itself was not fascinating, but I wanted to kind of show the differences between both days. So without further ado, here we go. Just a little bit of context. The chat took place on both August 18 and August 19 of 2005. For curiosity's sake, the 18th was on a Thursday and the 19th was on a Friday. Now, let's start looking into some of the data analytics. If we take a look at this data, the number of messages between each day are roughly about the same. One pattern that we notice is that the number of messages sent by the decoy actually increases from the first day to the second day, versus the predator actually has a consistent number of messages between both days. Now, looking at the number of words between both days, the predator obviously had more of the words being used in the content, and that's because the predator was the one driving the majority of the conversation. However, on the second day, because there was that skepticism from the predator, it seemed that the decoy was the one that had to lead most of the conversation. So you can see that the decoy had about 451 words used while the predator had only 400. And if you look at this, it seems that the predator had was dominating over 50% of the words versus on the second day, it was the decoy that was dominating more than 50% of the words. Let's take a quick look at the density plot. Now the density plot over here represents the number of words per message. So on the first day, we can see that the predator actually has seen a, a fairly larger dominance in terms of the number of words per message used. The decoy over here has a peak right over here where it seems that most of the messages from the decoy were ranging between maybe we could say like two to seven words or two to six words per message. So obviously this is not a surprise because the predator was the one driving the majority of the conversation and was, was trying to really get as much information and to get as much answers as he could from the decoy. However, for day number two, it's drastically different. If we notice over here, the predator seems to dominate uh, most of the messages that contain only a few words. So we could see the peak right over here that really tells the big story. And this is because on the second day, the predator seemed to be skeptical of what was going on and he was replying with those more one or two worded messages versus the decoy was trying to get him to uh, come back in and try to see if they can meet up somewhere. So um, it seemed that the decoy was the one that had to drive most of this conversation, even right over here. If we could see all the way on the right side, it looks like the decoy had a lot more content uh, per message. Uh, so it just seems, again, that the, the decoy was the one driving the majority of the conversation on the second day. Even looking at the cumulative messages on day one, we can see that the conversation spanned from right before 4 p.m. all the way to about 5 p.m. And it seems that the trend is uh, fairly constant uh, between the two. Um, there doesn't seem to be much of a larger gap. Um, so it seems that the conversation was flowing pretty naturally. And uh, it seems that the number of messages uh, exchanged between the two was roughly about the same. And now if you look at day two, you can see that the conversation spanned from about 1030 in the morning all the way until 1 p.m. And as you can see, the number of messages throughout the morning were roughly about the same between the two. We notice that there is somewhat of a difference between uh, the two right before noontime. And that's when the predator was starting to make some of those uh, requests to the decoy about uh, what to wear and what not to wear or in where to meet. And then you're also going to notice that from right before noontime all the way until roughly about 1230, 
the lines seem to be constant, and that's because there was a big break between uh, the the messages. Um, there was no conversation, particularly during this time, and uh, one may speculate that it could be John Kennelly thinking again about his decision as to, okay, should I go through with this or not? But it actually turned out that they just momentarily left the conversation and then past that uh, point over here, they continued to talk about some of the logistics um, for meeting. Uh, but and, and, and it seemed that the predator was the one that was um, leading most of the messages uh, towards the end. Now, if we look at the cumulative words on day one, we're going to notice that uh, the gap between the two, the, both the predator and the decoy, actually gets larger over time. We're going to notice right at about this point over here, uh, we start to notice that the gap is starting to get larger. And during the conversation, uh, it only took roughly about 10 minutes from the start of the conversation. So from here all the way until this point over here, uh, it was that was the point where John Kennelly was just ready to meet up with him. And he was like, you know what? I want to meet up with you, bro. And, you know, he, he was using more specific language, which we will get into in the qualitative ana analysis part. But again, this was the part where John Kennelly was really hooked on to meeting with the decoy. And that's where the predator was just messaging so much more and asking all these questions. So, and then the decoy was just responding with those fewer words as anticipated. And while looking at the cumulative words on day two, we can see a different story. So it starts out where the number of words are roughly about the same, right fr from here until here. So in the first maybe 20-ish um, minutes, it, it was actually roughly about the same. However, now you could see that the decoy is the one leading the conversation from uh, right, at about, right before 11 a.m. all the way just before uh, noontime. And that's because in the beginning, the predator was actually trying to get the uh, decoy to go spend time with his mom and dad. And uh, the predator was just staying to himself. He wasn't really responding with those lengthy messages. Um, and of course, you know, from uh, the first point over here until over there, um, it's a straight line because, of course, there was no conversation during that time. Uh, and then they continue the conversation. But again, it's dominant by the decoy. The decoy is the one that is really dominating this uh, day number two. All right, let's take a quick look at the words that were used on the first day. So for day one with the decoy, um, he seemed to use a lot of bro type language. Um, he sounded trying to sound like a cool kid, trying to get the predator to do things for him and come straight to him. Um, so again, you see the word dude mentioned so many times, bro. And also it, uh, what I noticed is that the decoy was the one that was actually using more foul language in his chat um you know again naked as well because again he specifically asked for the predator to show up naked um it sounds like they made a deal over here um he's talking about partying as well talks naked right over there um and again if you take a closer look at all the language used here we can notice that the decoy is using a bit more of that like cool kid type of language Meanwhile, for Canelli, he was using different types of words on the first day. We noticed that he uses the words bro a lot, babe, love, and Brandon. Um, and this really indicates just the personalized attention that the predator is trying to give to the decoy. And also things like boyfriend, uh, sweet. And, and, and again, it was very personalized in this. And he was giving him a lot of attention. Um, and we're going to take a, another look at uh, some of the graphs just to uh, take a closer look at the content and the number of uh, and the frequency of these words. Uh, but again, his language was a bit more of like grooming. He was really trying to groom and, and it shows very specific language and trying to give him that personalized attention on the first day. And here is the graph that shows the distribution of the word frequencies for the first day by the predator. And of course, you could get all the numerical values here. We see a lot of use of the word bro, love, Brandon, babe, sweet, you know, talking about boyfriend, sweetie, uh, let's meet, asking for pics, uh, suck, we can imagine what that could mean. Uh, and, and again, it, you could always refer to that word cloud that I showed earlier to get to get a more detailed sense of the kind of language he was using. And here's a graphical distribution of the words used by the decoy on the first day. 
So again, an overuse of dude, uh, some foul language here, the bro, the wanna. So again, it's more of that insisting, I want to come over, want to do this, uh, showing up naked, uh, a deal, talking about his dad, talking about partying. So again, a uh, bit more of that party-ish, cool kid type of vibe that the decoy was giving off here. Now, if we look at day number two for the decoy, it doesn't seem that there's any type of trend in terms of the words. Uh, there is that emphasis on meeting, of course, McDonald's, because that was their place of meeting on the second day. Uh, rain, I think that was referring to the the, the day being rainy. Uh, they talked a little bit about dressing. I think in this case, the decoy was trying to showcase that, uh, the, that he likes to dress like girls. So I think that was probably what it was. Um, and then it, it doesn't really say much more. I think also hurry was one that stood up to me because the, uh, decoy was trying to get, uh, John Kennedy to hurry up in, in terms of, in terms of meeting. Um, and of course, you know, some other words that you can actually look at over here as well. And now for John on day number two, um, also had a different, uh, selection of words here. I think the word underwear is one that stands out. And again, I think he had that very specific request of asking the decoy to not wear an underwear when they meet up. So that was really emphasized. You can also see McDonald's was also emphasized. Uh, they're talking about leaving. Again, he insisted multiple times for the decoy to leave the chat and, and let's go and, and, and meet up. Um, Jima was actually just the Jima and Iwo. It's Iwo Jima, um, and that's just the place of meeting. Um, so it's just him saying that again and again. Um, he says a lot of cool. And I think this, the cool responds more to uh, maybe the, the, some of the messages in the beginning phase where he was just kind of responding, um, in very, in, in a very dry manner. Um, so it could very well be that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that is the case or maybe not. Uh, looking at some of this other stuff like wait and like walk. So they're talking about some of the logistics in terms of meeting. Um, of course, like where, um, traffic, truck. And again, it's just this second day was more about logistics and, and meeting up. It wasn't really uh, more of the personal attention that they got on the first day because, of course, he was trying to be a bit more careful here. Um, but of course, that didn't work out for him. And if you're interested, here are the top words from the predator on the day number two. And you can see the distribution here, which looks somewhat different than the first day. And here is a distribution of words for the decoy on day number two. And this one doesn't really tell much of a trend. It seems to be, um, there wasn't really much of a theme here, really, um, other than just meeting at McDonald's and uh, trying to get the, the predator to show up. And there you have it. That is a thorough data analysis of John Kennelly's chat with the decoy. He definitely stands out as a predator. He's set up the multiple trends, the first being showing up naked, and the second one of being the one of the first predators to show up another time. So he was a double offender here. But let me know what you think of the comments below, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and let me know who you'd like me to cover next. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode.